goodwill. And now I would like uh, to pass the floor to Anthony Bailey and in doing so offer him my personal congratulations uh, on his 50th birthday. Uh, <laughs> and to thank him uh, for his long track record of promoting uh, interreligious understanding and harmony across Europe and the wider world. Mr. Ambassador, Your Royal Highnesses, uh, Mr. Dean, uh, Your Excellencies, Your Eminences, my Lord's Minister, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it gives me very great pleasure as the Delegate of the Constantinian Order in Britain to warmly welcome each of you this evening to this New Year's reception and this celebration of faith. First and foremost, I want to thank Lubomir for hosting us in this unique corner of Kensington, which I have no doubt and will always remain a faithful part of the European Union. <laughs> As someone well acquainted with Slovakia, the sentiments Your Excellency and your President have expressed mirror my own. I'm only too aware of the important role that faith continues to play in your nation's proud history and at pivotal moments in its history. I was, as you know, Lubomir, privileged to witness at first hand your compatriots' determination to stand up for their freedom, their democracy, their faith during the Velvet Revolution of 1989, and there are some very interesting additional panels in this room that tell that story. And for those of you here who have not yet visited Slovakia, may I strongly urge you to do so. There is so much to see in this country, and you will come to see face to face the warmth and welcoming Slovak hospitality just as we are enjoying here this evening. May I also, Ambassador, bring you the warmest greetings of His Eminence Cardinal Vincent Nichols, our Order's Grand Prior, and of the Chief Rabbi, and of Lord Rowan Williams, whom I met last night and all asked to be remembered in a special way today. I am also delighted that His Eminence Archbishop Angelos, the Coptic Archbishop of London, and if I may say, one of this nation's most senior interfaith campaigners and leaders, honours us with his presence, as does Lord George Kerry, Bishop Paul Hendricks of Southwark, and Huran Khan, the Secretary General of the Muslim Council of Britain. For those not acquainted with the Constantinian Order, it is one of the oldest internationally recognised Roman Catholic charitable orders of knighthood in existence today. Indeed, even in these parts, the first known Irish knight was invested in 1728 and the first known British knight in 1801. Since the earliest origins of the order, it has worked to resolve for the defence of faith and the values and values greatly the relationships of cooperation and trust it has built across the boundaries of faith, culture and race. Our order is proud too that alongside our Catholic knights and Danes, our Anglicans, Orthodox, Protestants, Muslims, Jews and Sikhs, among many others. We, we remain true to our Roman Catholic heritage, yet are deeply proud of our diversity and hold firm to what St. John Paul II said was his conviction that what unites the faith is far more important than what divides them, and his belief that religions need to be the primary bridge builders in our fractured world. Such gatherings tonight show us how we are brought together because of our faith and not in spite of it. And this message is one that needs to be heard loud and clear in our contemporary culture, which can at times perceive religious conviction as intolerant and at times unwelcome. Diversity and difference is everywhere. 
And we can either make something positive of that or something negative of that. To make something positive of it is to realize that we are less than we truly are when we cannot cope with the other. Other people are not going away. And so we share the crises of modern life. So the other person, the other religious group, the other culture, the other tradition is in fact a resource in a shared crisis. We have all to seize the moment and draw out of each other the deepest resources to resolve a crisis and we should not be afraid to do so. An occasion that struck me, uh, or struck home with me, was when I was uh, organising, as an Irishman, a street party in London in honour of the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. Within 200 metres of my home, I later discovered no less than 50 different nationalities, cultures, faiths and traditions. I had Germans running off flagpoles of the Union Jack. I had Chinese cooking like nobody can imagine. I had Persians dancing in the street. I had the Guatemalan ambassador who was in uh, um, uh, Fawcett Street bringing out some of the finest liquor that his country could produce. And, um, and I thought it was a fantastic celebration. And I thought that the street party would be a good occasion for the neighbours to gather. And to my amazement, I discovered that many had been living in the same streets next to each other, but it was the first time that many of them had ever talked to one another. Such is the problem of modern neighbourhoods. You might know the person either side of you, but two away, three away, or opposite you. This breakdown in community is happening at a time of a rise in hate speech. And we know how quickly that can move to hate crime, or even in parts of the world, to out-and-out -out persecution. People are sadly defining themselves today more about what they stand against rather than what they stand for. As a result, there is an increasing reluctance to engage with, to talk to, to even listen with people of opposite views to your own. Therefore, we are living in a bubble, creating and encouraging a them and us atmosphere within our society. Gatherings like tonight bring together people and organisations of goodwill. And so I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you for the roles that you play and the roles that you offer the organisations and communities you live in. We also need to be realistic about those challenges. We need to create some sort of symphony style society and live like an orchestra where each instrument plays its, its own unique sound but under the baton of a global conductor. We can blend together and produce perfect harmony. This is what the Constantinian Order tries to do and I know so many others here do too. Mr Ambassador, I'm delighted to see here tonight so many representatives of states and territories where faith is an essential part of national identity. I particularly uh, welcome the ambassadors of Georgia and commend her on the tremendous trip that she arranged for so many of us to your country and the audience that you arranged with His Holiness the Patriarch. Uh, on recent trips that I've made to other parts of the world, I've seen too that importance. I welcome in a particular way the ambassadors of Honduras, of Kuwait, of Malta, Peru, Poland, Montenegro and Serbia, and other countries where the governments have placed significant resources to renovate and restore places of worship particular Hungary and Belarus, or in Taiwan, which continues to lead a regional effort to promote and champion the freedom of thought, conscience and religion. 
Having recently returned from Grenada, I read at the airport that their national motto was ever conscious of God, we aspire, build and advance as one people. That must surely be uh, at the heart of what draws us all here tonight. It is now my great pleasure to introduce the Minister for Faith and Communities, the Right Honourable Viscount Yungo Lecky, who will speak to us on behalf of Her Majesty's Government. Thank you for listening. 